beautiful over here. Normally, I try to ignore gentlemen who attract me with brazen flattery, but in your case, I'll make an exception. So how is Sarah's bridal shower? Oh, simply lovely. But all that talk about love and romance made me want to rush right over here and be with my husband. We um, veteran brides like to feel desirable, too, you know. Let me tell you something, Mrs. B. You're the most desirable woman in this whole damn town. <laughs> Thank you very kindly, sir. AC, you ordered before I got here? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. It's a special today, and I, I thought maybe they might run out if I waited. Ooh, it must be some kind of special. <laughs> oh, Ace. Go on, open it. And there's more. Two tickets to New York. Two of the hottest shows on Broadway. Ace. May, what's wrong? I know what you're trying to do, and the answer is no. What the hell is wrong with a husband showering gifts on his wife? I mean, you're the one who said romance isn't just for the young. Darling, this is not about romance. This is bribery. What? You heard me. A necklace and tickets to two Broadway shows, honey, they can't buy me off. And they certainly can't take the place of having a baby. Clint, can you spare a moment? Of course, come in. How's the world of land view society? The words cruel and cutthroat come immediately to mind. Well, this looks more like an editorial than it does a gossip column. It is. It's a rebuttal to all the other nasty articles that have been written about Gabrielle in other newspapers. Julia, I can understand your loyalty to your daughter. Then you'll but... print that article exactly as it's written. Oh, Clint, I feel very strongly about this. And I'm willing to put my job on the line for this point. I won't take no for an answer. Okay. Well, this isn't... Uh... As bad as we thought it could be. What a bet. Look, Tina, you're not going to be here that much. Just think of it as a place where you just rest your head every night. Every night? For six months. Six months is no time at all. Come on, it's not that bad. It's got, uh, uh, hey, look at this. Big closet right there. A couple of beds. Look comfortable. Yeah. yeah, that's because I'm going to have a roommate. With my luck, it'll probably be a murderer or something. Tina, this is a halfway house. It's not Statesville Penitentiary. Yeah, it's not exactly a country club, though, either, is it? No, Tina, it's not. But then again, we never thought it would be. You know, Tina, you have been in tougher places than this. Uh, I seem to remember this jungle down in South America. You're right. You're right. If I could survive being lost in the jungle, I can survive this. There you go. Now you're talking. Hey, what, why don't you unpack a couple of your things? Well, maybe I interrupt whoever make the place. Up. Tina? Gabrielle? got me all wrong, Renee. As wrong as I was about the puppy you bought me. Darling, I would like nothing more than to go up to New York and spend a weekend seeing plays and shopping. Well, good. Let's make some reservations. But, Asa, that is not going to change my mind. I want to adopt a child. I want to hold it. I want to cuddle it and love it. I mean, all the things that a mother gets to do. 
It's that damn shower. You saw Sarah all aglow, getting married, you want to share it. I understand that. But you can't go making snap decisions. Lisa, this is not a snap decision, and you know it. But you are right about one thing. Sarah's happiness has affected me. I mean, she and Bo want to have a house full of children, a passel of children, as the Buchanan say. I only want one. Darling, I think it's the only thing I've missed having in my life, and time is running out. Renee, you sound like you've got a bionic clock ticking in your head. The word is biological, Asa, and it's not ticking. It's clanging like a fire alarm. Renee, don't you think I've had urges? Hell, I wanted a Morgan horse so bad I couldn't think of anything else. But I got over it. <laughs> I can't believe you. I am not talking about a horse. All I'm saying is that adopting a baby is important right now. It'll be something else next week. This, this urge is just a momentary fancy. In time, it will pass. How can I get through to you? How can I prove to you that this is not a mere urge or a passing fancy? Darling, it is a dream that I have had all my life. A dream that I had to lock up and throw away because of the life I led. But it's different now. I have a beautiful marriage with a man that I love very much, and I want to make it complete with a child. You're saying this child is for you and me, not for yourself. That we need it to complete our family. Hallelujah, he sees the light. Mm. Let me tell you something. What did he say? 15 years. Old Ace is not around. Asa Buchanan, you are going to outlive the buffalo on the nickel. Mm. That's a fair question, Renee. What if the good Lord decides that my time is up? Now, who's going to be here for you and the child? It's short and to, to the point, don't you agree? I mean, it's short, but it's specific. Nobody could accuse me of being vague or inaccurate. I can substantiate every word. Clint, say something. Well, there's, uh, there's only one thing to say. The answer is no. No? No. You won't print the editorial? The banner doesn't print personal attacks, Julia. Now, if you would like to write a letter to the editor as a private citizen, I'll make sure that it's printed. But we have a standing rule here. Uh, employees don't write editorials. Even if they're right? Even if they're right. But I think you're missing... You're missing the point. Uh, if the... Intruder in any other newspaper wants to lower their standards and print their personal opinions on their front page That's their business me. I don't want any part of that Let me just clarify that so you're saying that you think that the intruder and all the other newspapers Were irresponsible in what they printed. I'd rather not get into that Oh, well, then so you're saying that you absolutely agree with everything they said about my daughter. I mean at least have the courage to admit it <laughs> Courage doesn't have anything to do with it. Just as my personal opinions about Gabrielle have nothing to do with what the banner prints or doesn't print. So, that's your answer? <clears throat> that's my answer. You can interpret it any way you want to. Well, how else can I interpret it? And how can I go on working for someone who has <coughs> such a, a low opinion of my daughter? All right, you want to speak openly? Honestly? I honestly think that this discussion has more to do with you than it has to do with your daughter. And that this column that you've written is more in your defense than it is in hers. Isn't that right? What are you doing here? Well, I could ask the same question. This is my room. <laughs> no, it's not. It's mine. Well, I guess we don't have to wonder who your roommate is going to be now, do we? Oh, no, 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 no. No, absolutely not, honey. I want you to go talk to whoever runs this place, and I want you to get me in a different room. Tina, please. No, no, I mean it. I mean, I, I, I can't spend one, one night in the same room with her. What? 
don't see why not. I'm looking forward to spending it with you. All right, ladies, let's settle down, please. As a matter of fact, I think I would prefer to sleep with a rattlesnake. I'm sure you would. At least the two of you would have something in common. Oh, this is OK, nice. what's going on here? A mistake. There has been some mix-up in the room assignments here. And I would really appreciate it if you could give us separate rooms. Oh, I'm sorry, ladies, but there's been no mistake. Judge Carlin specifically ordered that you should room together. Why? Well, you shared in a crime. You'll have to share in each other's rehabilitation. Oh, wait a minute. That's not correct, honey. Say something. Tina, this kind of makes sense to me in a twisted kind of way. What are you talking about? It doesn't matter what your husband says, Tina. The judge has made his ruling, and there's nothing you can do but make the best of it. Get along with us, we'll get along with you. Make trouble, you'll get trouble in return. Do I make myself clear? Mr. Roberts, I'll let you say your goodbyes, and then you will have to leave. Yes, ma'am. Looks like it's time to unpack. Honey, I want you to go right to the Supreme Court. I want you to get me another room. Tina, it's not like we're talking a bread and water situation here. Now, listen, you, you're going to get your days to go out of here, to go out and work. You can come over and see CJ. If you want, I'll bring him to you where you're working. But every night and every weekend, I'm going to be stuck here with her. It beats being in prison, Tina. That doesn't make me feel a whole lot better. I wish I could make this better for you, Tina. I mean, I truly do. But I can't. And you had a chance to fight this. And you know why I didn't, Cord. I'm sorry, Tina. I gotta be going. You listen to me. You, you hang tough. You understand? You'll be all right. Gabrielle, good luck. Thanks. Cordman, please. Tina, just let him go. Can't you see the awkward position you put him in? What about the awkward position you've put me in, huh? And I'm not going to let you get away with it. You heard what Yolanda said. Don't cause trouble. I won't. Just get your stuff off my bed. Your bed? What's the difference? They're both the same. Use that one. I was here first, and I picked this one. Oh, Tina. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to find something to start a fight. The only difference is, I'm not interested. Oh, yeah, Gabrielle Medina, woman of peace. I don't know about you, but I think I've had enough fights for a lifetime. You want this bed? It's yours. Thank you. You're welcome. say something to you. Now, don't start on me now, please. Look, this is important to me that I get this straight between us, all right? Now, look, if it weren't for you... Yes, I know, your life would be perfect. I'm the root of all evil. I'm the devil himself, whatever you say. You're the one who switched the babies. I would never have done anything that horrible. And look, I'm stuck here now because of that. So I hope you're real proud of yourself. You know, I hope you're happy. Go ahead. Blame me for everything that's wrong in your life. I'm to blame, but I'll tell you something. No. No, I won't. You see, we could stand here and we could argue about what we did or didn't do in the past. It's obvious that we both made a lot of mistakes, so why don't we put it behind us and get on with our lives? Yeah, you know what mistake I've made lately is trusting you. Why is it that I can face up to everything that I've done, but you can't? It's always someone else, not Tina, right? Oh, now, you just wait a minute. No, now. you wait. I'm not the one who lied to my husband because I wanted to get my hands on the crown jewels of Mandora. Oh, no, you're the one who switched two beautiful, innocent babies just so you could get your hands on Michael Grant. This is all your fault. That's how this all started. If that's what you really believe, then you are thicker than I thought. Fine. That is not when the trouble began. It's not when you trusted me. Quite the opposite. It's when I trusted in you, and you stole my baby. Dr. Marshall. Okay, I've finished, Nancy. Oh, hope I remembered how to do it correctly. Thank you, Brenda. You're great. You're the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> just check it first. I'll second Tell that. Me. Hey. Oh, hi, Larry. Mm -hmm. God, Larry, what? would you stop it? What are people going to say? I don't know. What do you say, Nancy? <laughs> hot. Definitely uh, hot. Would you come on? Go ahead. 
I appreciate all of this attention, but this is my first day back. I need to play it pretty straight, so can't help What are you doing? What are you worried about, my reputation or yours? Yours? Yeah, well, forget that. My reputation's already shot. I want you to take it easy on your first day, all right? It's a tough uh, tough day at the hospital, and if you're not prepared for it... Honey, you... come here. Come here. I... Oh, now... <laughs> now <laughs> this is a part-time job, and I'm not going to let anybody else in the world raise my child. Okay? Our child, okay? Our child. Oh, kiddo. Oh, boy, it wasn't so long ago your life was in turmoil. You thought you lost Stephen, and now we're just one big happy family. Yeah, we are. I will not have you talking like that. You just got to face the facts. You are going to be around. That is a fact. And if you won't take care of yourself, I will. But one way or another, you're going to be here for a long, long time. Right. If only to give you more than I already have, without the baby as an added equation. Oh, Lord. You know, it's not only me that needs you. What about the rest of your family? Especially Clint and Vicky and the grandkids? I mean, you haven't even said anything about this plan of theirs to move out west. Oh, that. I can't believe that you're laughing about it. I thought you would go up and in smoke on the mere mention of it. Well, I would if I took it seriously, but I don't. It's another momentary fancy like yours about that baby. And you know what? You are wrong on both counts. Vicky was talking to me at the shower. They are planning on moving from Landview lock, stock, and barrel. That's a definite. Let's go. What? Go where? Where? To pound some sense into that son of mine. Oh, no, you don't. No, no, you don't. No, thank you. No, no. I have problems enough of my own. Renee, this is family. If things are as bad as you say... Th yes, they are. But I am family, too, and maybe one day you're going to realize that. Meantime, I'm going to take a little walk. I have a lot of thinking to do. Really trying to stem the, 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 the flow of bad publicity about Gabrielle. Why is that so hard for you to understand? That isn't hard to understand at all. Just like it isn't hard to understand how you're feeling right now. I mean, the humiliation at Gabrielle's trial. The, the sense of not having any friends or even a home here in Landview? I'm not judging you, Julia. I like you. But you know, frankly, lately I've gotten a feeling that you don't really like yourself. Now, maybe you're angry at your daughter. Then again, maybe you're angry at you. You know something, Clint? You're right. You're absolutely right. You know, you can uh, love Gabrielle and still be disappointed in her. And you can kick yourself for your mistakes. But that doesn't mean that you have to completely give up on yourself. Why not? Everyone else has. Everyone in Landview turned their back on me as soon as the, the terrible truth about the Medinas came out of the trial. Everyone except you. Well... That's just pure cousinness on my part. I like to uh, make up my own mind about people. Well, I think it was more than pure cussedness. I was sure that you'd terminate my position at the banner immediately after the trial. Never even considered it. Just like I didn't consider uh, accepting your resignation. Now, I haven't uh, approved of everything you've done since you came to town. And that goes double for Gabrielle. But it still isn't up to me to pass judgment. Wish other people in Landview felt that way. Well, I'll give them some time, and, and maybe they will. Meanwhile, if I wouldn't let it bother me that much, you know, just turn your back on it. <laughs> I've given that advice to Gabrielle and Deborah hundreds of times. I guess I just needed someone to say it to me. Well, maybe that's why God made cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> You've turned out to be such a good friend. God, I wish you weren't leaving. I'm going to miss you. You're the only person in Landview who I can trust. The only person who trusts me. Landview isn't really all that unfriendly a place. You know, you get to know it a little bit better. I'll bet you make a bunch of friends. Maybe. I bet they won't all be as kind and understanding as you've been. I hope your wife knows what a gem she has in you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs>
So, Deborah, what's going on? How come you're so all fired up to see me all of a sudden? Would have thought you got enough of me over at the gym today when you give me those ballerina lessons. Well, no, I mean, you left in such a hurry. Oh, uh, is everything OK at home? Uh, not really, no. Uh, well, listen, if you don't want to talk about it, it's fine. Well, it's not really a matter of not talking about it. It's the uh, same old saying. Tina, she had her big meeting with Judge Carlin. <laughs> she struck a bargain with the man. Didn't even bother to consult me about it. She's going to be spending six months at the halfway house with your sister. Tina and Gabrielle in the same house? Oh, it gets better than that. They're going to be in the same room. Oh, no. Yeah, to me, that only spells more trouble. But I've forced myself not to worry about it, and I think you should do the same. I mean, your sister's punishment is not your responsibility. And Tina isn't your responsibility either. Mm. So is that why we're here, to be a mutual pep talk for one another? Well, no, but it seems to be working, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it does. Well, um, anyway, I'm very glad that you bought your camera, because I, I didn't mention it on the phone. Oh? You want me to take some more shots? Wait, are you trying to get a new story here in the banner about the Medina family again? Oh, no, no, I got it. You want me to take some candid shots of you for all your boyfriends back in England? No, there's no boyfriend, and it's not for Gabrielle or myself. It's for you. It's for that story you're doing on the drugs. I've set up everything, and all you have to do is start clicking. Oh, wait just a minute here. Let's get this clear. I think you've forgotten that, that I delivered your baby and saved your life in Argentina, and then I was publicly humiliated for what I did. My whole life just went down the tubes because of it. Believe me, I think I have paid. And you deserved every bit of it because you wanted my son to pass him off as yours. I was desperate. I thought I'd lost mine. Yes, well, I was desperate that Michael was going to take his own life if I didn't do something drastic like switch the babies. Well, listen, that does not excuse what you did. No, and it doesn't excuse what you did either, but no, you can't face up to the fact that you did something wrong, that old Tina was the one who did something wrong. No, I'm not going to let you bring me down to your level. Oh, wait a minute here. I couldn't go down to your level because I'd have to get a shovel and start digging. Good. Keep it up. I love the insults. Oh, great. Well, you know what? I can't believe that I was so stupid as to trust you and give in to your blackmail. You know, if I hadn't done that, Cord would still want me. I'm sorry. I didn't realize things were that bad between you two. <laughs> yeah, I bet you're sorry. No, Tina, I really am. There was quite a lot of tension when he was here. When's the divorce? Who said anything about a divorce? Well, the way you're talking, I just assumed that was the next thing. No, he still loves me. You just said he didn't. I, he's just angry at me is all, okay? It's, he's, he'll forgive me, he will, I, I know he will. That's better. At least you two aren't fighting. No, we decided to try silence for a change, right, Tina? Well, good. Then you can concentrate on finding a job. The sooner you get out, start pounding the pavements, the better for both of you. Good hunting, ladies. Custodial helper. Oh. That's just a fast, fancy way of saying bathroom attendant. Well, it's honest work, Tina. It's cleaning toilets. I can't do that. You don't have to take that job, do you? Look, they're all like that, right? Look, toll booth collector, snowplow operator, oyster shucker. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm sure Vicky will give you a job at the banner. No. The judge made it perfectly clear that I can't get a job from my family. Really? Well, you better look for those rubber gloves and a good brush. Looks like you're scrubbing toilets. Looks like we both are. Because if we don't get a job, it's prison. I wonder how much lip gloss I'm going to need when I clean a toilet. Oh, well, you can never have too much. Next time you see me, I will be a custodial helper. Tina, wait. 
What, well, if you want this job, fine. I'll go to the, do the toll booth. No, 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 no. I would just like you to listen to me. We don't have to like each other. We don't have to agree on what we did or didn't do in the past. We don't even have to be nice to one another. But since we are going to share this room, I think we should abide by a few rules. Yours? No, our rules. Rules that we can both live with so that we're not stepping on each other's toes. That way, if we can stay on good behavior, perhaps our sentences could be reduced. Are you trying to lecture me on how to behave? No, I'm not trying to lecture you. This is for your own good as well as mine. I know it's for my own good, and I'm not going to get in any trouble, believe me. But I don't need you telling me how I'm supposed to behave. You silly little fool. I don't give a damn how you behave. Just stay out of my way. Fine, just stay out of mine. Oh, I have no intention of getting in your way. I mean, I don't want to make my life any more miserable than it already is. Look, I'm already agreeing with you. Fine, then we understand each other. What, do you want it in blood? Why do you make this so difficult? I'm not making it difficult. The only difficult thing about this is that I'm going to have to look at your face every day until this whole thing is taken care of. It, uh, it makes Statesville look like paradise. You want Statesville? Listen, dear, you'll get there real quick if you keep this up. Oh, no, I'm not going to let you do this. I'm not going to let you provoke me into getting thrown out of here. So you can forget about that. Look, I'm going to get a good, honest job. That's what I'm going to do. And with any luck, I'm not going to ever have to speak to you again. Good. <laughs> well, you're uh, just the person I'm looking for. See, you know, I never noticed anybody looking good in these outfits before. Michael, are you crazy? This is awful. No, it's not. Yeah, everybody's been very nice to me today. I don't know if this is my lucky day or something like that. Well, but... you deserve lucky days. You also deserve this. What is that, Michael? This is something I found in a store window. Here, open it. It's not my birthday or anything, It's you my know? way of saying thank you for last night. Michael, Now, Brenda, please, I wasn't don't... myself at Barry's Bar and Grill, if you remember. I do. Uh, no, correction. I was very much myself pitying and angry self. Michael, everybody understands how difficult it was for you in trial there. Well, that's, that's fine, but it's no excuse for getting south. I, 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 I'm grateful to you, Brenda, for, for having driven me home. Well, it's like they say on TV, you know, you never let your friends drive drunk, ever, ever. Right, and you were a friend, a very good friend, so consider this my thank you note. Okay. Oh, it's just lovely. Did you know that I collect music boxes? You do? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I didn't know that. Alicia was collect... Alicia collects music boxes, huh? Well, she did. Yeah. Yeah. I guess she's, uh, she's on my mind a lot uh, these days. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's so ironic that, uh, that uh, Gabrielle is uh, practically going free on the day that Alicia and I would have been celebrating our 10th Michael, anniversary. Michael, Michael. Gabrielle isn't going free. Now, that halfway house that she's going to be spending ten years in is no hell spa. I, I, I know that, but uh, she's alive and she's well and she's functioning, and my wife and my child are not, and there I go again, there I go, self-absorption, rambling on about my own problems. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brenda. Don't apologize. I'm just kind of worried about you, you know, how, how hard this is on you. Well, I'm, I'm trying uh, not to let it get to me. And, and having you to talk to helps a lot. Also to be my chauffeur once in a while. You know, actually, you were doing very well up until that point. Well, you were. Maybe so. Uh, but I'm back on track now. And, and, and since I'm going to be able to play with Stephen and visit him, uh, it's going to keep me up to snuff, I promise. Right. And that's very important for him, too, Michael. Well, I hope so. You know. Sometimes we're just sitting, reading a story, and I, and I catch him. I catch him looking at me. You do. As if, <laughs> as if he knows how important he is to me. Yeah. You're important to me, too, Brenda. I want you to know that. So, do you remember the woman at the gym? Yes. How could I forget her? She looked like she could bench press the two of us put together. Well, do you remember how you thought she might be a bodybuilder who'd be interested in steroids? <sighs> You know, I think I'm starting to regret ever telling you about that little investigation of mine. What did you do that you probably shouldn't have? Nothing. Nothing, 
that you should be worried about. All I did was I faked an injury. And then when she came over to me to ask me if I wanted a painkiller, I just casually asked her if she could get something stronger for my bodybuilder boyfriend. Oh, you didn't. Please tell me you didn't do that. Well, that's what you would have done, isn't it? Well, it's a little different, Deborah. See, I'm a reporter. That's my job. So I was just helping you. I mean, it was your hunch. And you were right. Her name is Steffi, and she made it very clear that I could have as many steroids as I wanted. I can't believe you took this kind of risk for me. What risk? I mean, I told you it was a fake injury. No, no, I'm not talking about your leg. I'm talking about your neck. Deborah. the people who deal in illegal steroids are the same people who deal in illegal drugs. Now, they are very dangerous people. What happens if they find out that you're involved in this? What happens if they track you down? They could do something to you. Good. why are you trying to frighten me? No, no, I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm just trying to make you realize what you have gotten yourself involved in here. Deborah, I would never be able to forgive myself if something happened to you. All right, now listen, um, as of right now, I just want you to stay away from this Steffi girl, all right? Just stay away from her and, and pretend that you never got involved in the whole thing, all right? I couldn't, even if I wanted to. Oh, Deborah, please, I, I don't want to get into an uh, argument. You don't understand, but... Cole. I arranged to meet her here to give me the steroids. When? Now? All right, look, Deborah, I want you to leave. Do you understand me? I don't want you involved in this. You don't understand. She's just walked in. Now, I hope my gift doesn't embarrass you. No, don't be silly. It doesn't embarrass me at all. It's, it's... I just don't want you to feel like you owe me anything for last night or any time, Michael, uh, really. Uh, Brenda, you... You were there when I needed help. Not only last night, but, but several times since the trial began. Uh, you've been kind and generous to me. Now, I'm not saying this to put you on the spot. I, I just want you to know how grateful I am. Well, that is the last thing I want you to be to me, is grateful, Michael. Oh. Well, uh, let's, let's blame all of this on uh, your brilliant son, then, shall we? Uh, he's, uh, he's the one that's going to call me uh, Uncle Michael, isn't it? Yeah, how do you feel about uh, that? Uh, well, <laughs> no, I, feel, I feel good about yeah. it. I don't have friends. I have, I have acquaintances. I have business associates. So my friendship with you and Stephen is very important to me. It's what's going to get me through the next few months, at least. Listen, uh, can you squeeze a cup of coffee into your busy schedule? Sure. We have to make it quick, but... That's fine. Sure. After you. Okay. the hospital personnel that told me to come to you. See, I'm applying for the, the job down in the laundry, and I need your recommendation. This is some kind of joke, right? Uh, no. I worked in the laundry when I was in jail for a short time. I have uh, some experience, and I would just need a word from you. Uh, let me, let me make sure I understand this. After all the pain and suffering you caused Brenda by switching the babies, not to mention Getting my son kicked off the hospital staff. You come in here looking for a job as if all, all is forgiven? I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm just asking for a chance. Judge Cohen feels that I deserve a chance to make it up to society. And I couldn't think of anywhere better but the hospital. I, I, I don't know what's more incredible, your sense of humor or your nerve. This is the place where all your trouble started, Gabrielle. And you expect us to trust you? I would be confined to the laundry area. I wouldn't be near the patients or the nurses or the doctors. None of you would have to worry that I was even there. Right, yeah. That's what we thought when you snuck into the nursery and switched the babies. Larry, I'm just trying to make up for things that I've done wrong. Well, I'm not in the making up business. I'm responsible for the hospital and for the people who work here, and the answer is no. Hi. Yeah. Uh, excuse me? Hi, dear. Hi, uh, Larry. 
The director of hospital personnel suggested I come talk to you about the job in the hospital laundry. All right. Let's clear the decks right here and now. Well, come on, by all means. This is crazy idea you have of moving to Buchanan City. You're still not considering it, I hope. No, I'm not still considering it because I've, I've reached a decision. All I've been waiting for is for Vicky to come around. And now that she has said yes, uh, there's nothing holding us back. You're, you're running off to Arizona. I know the reason. To get away from that reptile Roger Gordon. It isn't quite as simple as that, Paul. No, look me in the eye, Clint. And tell me that snake is not the reason. All right, maybe, maybe he influenced my thinking at, you know, in the beginning, but I've been up walking the floor enough nights thinking and wondering about him and Vicky. all right? I knew it. Now, wait a minute. I have gone way past that kind of thinking, Paul. Moving out to Arizona is a lot more to me than leaving Roger Gordon behind. I know how much you love Arizona, Clint, but it will always be there. You can visit it any damn time. I, I want more than a visit. I want to move out there with Vicky and the kids and settle down, Pa. I want to get back to our roots, where we can live in the wide open spaces and breathe some fresh air. It'll be like a new frontier, and we'll be the pilgrims. You can sing Home on the Range all you want, but you don't have to go to extremes. All we have to do is get rid of Roger Gordon. I don't need to get rid of Roger Gordon. All I need is to move out west with my family and settle down, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And. My mind is made up, Pa, and nothing is going to change it. That's it, Allie. You kiss us off, the ones you love, the ones who need you. Just a uh, quick goodbye and a forwarding address. Is that how I brought you up? No, huh? no, come on, Pa. I know, I know what you're saying in your own sweet, wonderful way. You're going to miss me. I know that. The hell I will if that's the way you feel about me and your kin. Uh, pa, don't you get it? Hell, I'm going to miss you, too. And I'll miss Cord and Bo and Sarah and a whole bunch of people. I didn't say it was going to be easy. I just said that's the way it has to be. Oh, I see. And I'm, I'm supposed to nod and, and say I understand. And that's all I'm good for in life. That's it, huh? Pa, you're my father. And I love you. And I always will. You have one hell of a way of showing it, I'll tell you. Well, Pa, we can still visit each other whenever we... Whenever we can, I mean, it, you'll see it. We'll make the adjustment. How the hell am I supposed to adjust, Clint? Losing a son, a daughter-in-law, and three grandchildren. Oh, come on, Pa. Have you forgotten about Cord and CJ? And look, when Bo and Sarah oh, get please, married, please, please, with my luck, they'll move to God knows where. Damn it! I mean, a man who thought there was no point in living without having a family around them. Now, how the hell did I come to this? It's not supposed to be, son. I'm sorry, Clint. It's just not supposed to be! What are you doing? You can't back out now. Yep. Listen, I thought you said you were going to be by yourself. I told you at the gym about the steroids. Calm down. Well, I mean, it was for my weightlifter boyfriend, Clyde, meet Steffi. Yeah, okay, well, look, let's just get right down to it, okay? I've got everything you could possibly want right here in this bag, and I can guarantee you the best price in town. Yeah, well, Steffi, you probably shouldn't have bothered because, uh, personally, I never touched the stuff. Clyde? No, see, my name is a new Clyde. See, I'm Cord Roberts. I'm a reporter over at the Banner. We're doing a feature article on illegal steroid traffic. Hey, what mm. is this? In fact, I would love to interview you, ask you a couple questions, strictly on the record, of course. Um, how was it you spelled your last name? You think you're real cute, don't you, hon? Cord, I just don't believe you did that. I mean, you must have realized that she wouldn't give you the information after you told her all that. Of course I realize that, Deborah. What happens if I print an article in the banner? What is she going to think? Well, who cares what she thinks? You would have got your story. No, no, you don't understand. She puts two and two together and realizes that you were my accomplice, that you were the informant. You know what's going to happen to you then? A couple guys with no necks are going to come and break your ballerina legs. Oh, I just can't believe you did that. I know how these things work. You don't. Now, I'm sorry I ruined your little adventure, but you are a hell of a lot more important to me than some feature story. Hi, Al. 
I know you're probably wondering why Mommy hasn't come to see you. There's a very good reason. I'm looking for a job. And, sweetheart, it's not very easy. But I'm not going to give up, because as soon as I find this job, you see, that means that I can come and see you all the sooner. So here's a big kiss. <laughs> Be good. And remember me in your prayers, because I will never forget you in mine, all right? Mommy loves you. Do you want me to come back when you're done? No, no, I'm finished. So I take it you got the job at the hospital. Uh, no, actually, uh, Larry really wanted me to. He did. He, he pleaded with me, but I, uh, I told him I wasn't right for it. Uh-huh. What really happened? Oh, I'm too tired to lie. He didn't want me any more than he wanted you. Hospital morale, right? Bingo. And I went on six job interviews. I went on seven. Any luck? No. You? No. Yes, we better face it. We're the outcasts in town. Keep up at this rate, you know where we're gonna end up. I know. Believe me, I know what that means. Oh. Statesville. Oh, here we come again. Oh.